Concorde is the greatest civilian aircraft ever built. In the Aviation Hall of Fame, Concorde stands second only to the Wright brothers made in flight. Even before she leaves the ground, she goes like a bat out of hell. at twice the speed of sound, faster than the Earth rotates. Take off from London in the evening and you can watch the sun rise in the west. Concorde has been flying for over 30 years, but she's so far ahead of the pack, she's out of sight. Concorde is an Anglo-French invention. She was conceived, developed, and perfected in Toulouse, France, and Filton, England. June 4th, 2002. 50 years ago today, Elizabeth II was crowned Queen of England. The crowning moment of this golden jubilee will be provided by another queen, Concord, Sovereign of the Skies. At London's Heathrow Airport, Captain Mike Bannister is going through his pre-flight checks. Mike is the senior Concorde pilot in British Airways. There are 12 pilots in the team, but as number one, he's first choice to fly today's mission. I'm very honored to be involved in the Jubilee fly pass later on today. It's a great thrill. We've been preparing for it for over four months and very soon we'll be setting off to join up with the world's leading aerobatic team, the Red Arrows. At the time of the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977, Concorde had already been in service for one year. Remarkably, a quarter of a century later, she is still the world's only supersonic airliner. We'll join up with the Red Arrows over the North Sea, then with the rest of the formation, routing over London towards Her Majesty. It's going to be a great moment. Concorde is a fantastic aeroplane to fly. She handles so beautifully. She's so responsive that she's the perfect aeroplane to fly in formation. I'm seeing all of the mall and the whole of the front of Buckingham Palace. Truly millions of people there waving. When she made her maiden test flight from Toulouse, France in March 1969, Concorde was decades ahead of her time. The transistor radio was still considered a neat new idea. Home computers and even digital watches were still a dream. Yet here was an aircraft which aimed to carry 100 passengers at twice the speed of sound.
Concorde first smashed through the sound barrier in a test flight on the 1st of October, 1969. As she punched through the air at Mach 1, the sonic boom could be heard 20 miles away. It had cost over $3 billion to get Concorde airborne and supersonic. The four engines each provide 38,000 pounds of thrust, the equivalent of 6,000 family cars. Concorde is the only civilian aircraft that has afterburners. When lit, they give 20% extra thrust. The air intakes slow the speed at which the air hits the engines from 1,500 miles per hour to just 500 within their 11-foot length. The Gothic wing is sculpted from aluminum. There are no joints or welds. The Delta wing allows Concorde to take off and land at low speed, yet still fly supersonic. The trademark nose can drop by 12 and a half degrees. Concorde has a high angle of attack on takeoff and landing. If the nose were fixed, the pilots would not be able to see the runway beyond. On the 25th of July, 2000, Concorde crashed just after takeoff from Paris airport. Both French and British Concorde fleets were grounded. The disaster marred a previously unmatched safety record. A tire had punctured on takeoff, sending shrapnel into the fuel tanks encased in the wings. Amongst other measures, Kevlar linings were fitted to the fuel tanks to prevent recurrence, and within 15 months, the revamped Concorde was back in business. Concorde now flies three times a day from London and Paris to New York. She makes the 3,400-mile flight in less than half the time of a jumbo jet. She does it thanks to a series of engineering miracles. The pilot lights the afterburners for takeoff. is raised and the afterburners are switched off. Concorde won't go supersonic until she reaches the Atlantic, 150 miles to the west. Hello ladies and gentlemen, cruising along now, 26,000 feet and just under the speed of sound. We're estimating arrival in New York, just over three hours from now, touching down around 10 minutes past nine. Over the Atlantic, the pilot can really open her up. The afterburners are relit, and Concorde slips effortlessly through the sound barrier. You would just go gently through the speed of sound, and you'd know you're through the speed of sound, because as the shock waves start to form, all the pressure instruments give a slight kick, and you know you are truly supersonic. This plane is built for speed, and the faster she goes, the better she performs. At Mach 1.7, the afterburners are switched off again, and she accelerates to twice the speed of sound unaided. She's almost 60,000 feet above the Earth, on the edges of space, and flying as fast as a speeding bullet. Having beaten the sound barrier, Concorde must now beat the thermal barrier. At Mach 2, air friction heats her skin to 260 degrees Fahrenheit, well above the boiling point of water. Concorde's engines power the air conditioning system. Without it, the passengers would cook. 
As the plane heats up, she actually lengthens by up to a foot. Fortunately, the designers thought of that, and throughout the aeroplane, there are areas where the aircraft stretches. Only one of those is noticeable, and that's on the flight deck. There's a section between the flight engineer's panel and the piece behind where you can't get a sheet of paper on the ground, but in the air, it opens up and you can get your whole hand in there. There's an apocryphal story about one of the early pilots putting his hat in that gap in supersonic flight. When he came down and landed, he couldn't get it out. At this speed and height, jet fighter pilots must wear pressure suits and oxygen masks. Yet Concorde's passengers and crew need no special apparatus. It is the ordinariness of the ride that makes her so special. If you think about it, you're flying at twice the speed of sound on the edges of space, and the passengers are sitting there in total comfort in their shirt sleeves, drinking champagne and eating caviar in a completely normal environment, and that is one fantastic achievement. In 1996, Concorde made the transatlantic flight in record time, two hours, 52 minutes and 59 seconds. That's an average ground speed of over 1,200 miles an hour for the entire flight. New York is five hours behind London time, and as the flight takes less than three and a half hours, Concorde lands before it leaves. Concorde is a time machine. She's a great airplane to fly from a pilot's perspective and a fantastic airplane from a customer's point of view. I mean, nothing else offers you the opportunity to buy back time, to travel faster than the Earth rotates, to literally arrive before you leave. 30 miles out from New York, the pilot lowers the nose cone ready for landing. When one looks at Concorde from a distance, it seems to be much more pitched up than 11 degrees, but that's all it is. And then, of course, you touch down gently on the runway, reverse thrust, another roar from the engines, and you come to a stop. Concorde may be over 30, but she's still turning heads. Concorde is a piece of 20th century sculpture. It's a fusion of art and technology. And it looks so beautiful, it looks so right. It just captures people's imaginations. She is likely to be over 50 years old before another supersonic airliner comes along. Perhaps it's a case of being unable to improve on perfection. <laughs>